Okay, Alex, thank you very much. Thank you, Lucy, for the introduction and welcome everybody. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, choosing the best material for your RF printed uh, circuit board designs. Um, and uh, want to touch on a, on a couple of basics um, that hopefully are, are um, um, helping you um, being better able to um, provide your questions to, to your PCB supplier, to us as a material supplier, and get what you really want at the end of the day. So starting um, with uh, material characteristics uh, showing the agenda, we talk about what's the difference between radio frequency microwave and uh, HSD, uh, high-speed digital materials. Um, um, what is uh, within decay, there are a couple of uh, dependencies uh, like uh, anisotropy, frequency, temperature, and so on. Same for the F. Um, we are going to talk about insertion loss. Um, and later on, I'm going to show a couple of measurement uh, systems. Um, and then um, what we see as how requirements on our F stack ups have evolved over time. And finally, a quick snapshot, uh, but I'm going to keep that brief, a quick snapshot about our materials. Um, so starting with a difference between high-speed digital and RF signals, um, and um, to me, uh, basically, um, it is that in HSD, we have digital signals, mostly uh, just two levels, zeros and ones, can be more levels for PAM4, PAM8, and so on, but it's a um, limited number of levels. We talk about rectangular shapes. And the frequencies are, while not low, they are still very often much lower than in RF microwave. Um, properties that um, uh, designers are concerned with is impedance, insertion loss, and something called fiber weave effect. Um, we are talking about woven glass reinforced materials. So you can imagine if your circuitry runs over a, a bundle of glass, um, it acts a little bit different than if it uh, runs in between glass fibers. Um, on the other side, in RF microwave, um, we typically talk about analog signals, continuous amplitude, sine waves. Frequencies can be much, much higher. Uh, in automotive radar, for example, we are on 77 gigahertz. Um, for um, sixth generation mobile network, uh, we will be even higher, probably uh, even above 125 gigahertz. But we talk about more narrow band frequencies, not DC to the frequency we are, we are interested in, in case of HSD. Um, and designers are foremost, in my opinion, concerned about losses, um, anisotropy of a material, but very, very important to everybody is consistency. It's not so much about the absolute value, it's about consistency. And um, um, one very common requirement is to meet a certain decay requirement, and it's not that low is always better. Uh, you need to hit the decay that the design is asking for. Um, on the right-hand side, um, um, just uh, um, to um, explain why RF designers very often look at signals differently. Um, uh, HSD designers think in the time domain, which is the blue curve uh, at the top, uh, zeros and ones. And if you transfer that to a frequency domain, you get something like that, very broadband signal starting from DC out to higher frequencies. In RF microwave, we talk about sine waves. Um, which translate when in the frequency domain to a very narrow frequency band. And so RF microwave designers very often um, work in a frequency domain, while um, HSD designers tend to work in a time domain. But it's the same information. You can transfer back and forth. Um, it's just uh, what people are used to, to seeing. Um, the question why material selection is so important in RF designs is that um, the base material is not just the carrier for your transmission lines. Um, it's, it's much, much more. It's influencing your signals. It's influencing the transmission parameters like propagation speed. Uh, it causes a phase shift. It causes losses, attenuation. Um, the metal cladding, um, 
is also uh, affecting the losses and we are going into that a little bit deeper in, in follow-up slides. But um, you can't just think of a metal as a, as a, as a flat surface. Uh, there are roughnesses involved. Uh, there is a shape of a trace involved. All of that matters. And um, particularly in RF, uh, we very often have structures that are passive elements like inductances, coils, or capac capacitance, um, and you can form filter circuits with that. So it's not um, just a pure transmission from A to B, it's much, much more. And again, tolerances of all the parameters, dielectric thickness, decay, DF, line width, and so on, tolerances are key. The name of a game is as few tolerances as possible. Um, now, having spoken about that there are HSD and RF requirements, uh, you will see that there are also materials that are uh, tailored for HSD and materials that are tailored for RF. And the question very often is, what's the difference? And what we on our end do is in RF that we have constructions that keep a certain decay for all of our thicknesses. On the HSD side, that's different. Uh, typically, resin content changes over thickness, which affects decay. You don't want to have that in RF microwave. So we make sure that independent of thickness, you get the same decay. There's no change of resin content. There's a reduced thickness tolerances. Again, we don't want to have too much tolerances at all. We want to reduce variation. That's why we have to do that. And then there's testing of electrical properties of dialect constant and dissipation factor for every batch, which in turn makes the materials very stable and repeatable. Now, starting with the first um, parameter of the first char characteristics, dielectric constant, also called decay or epsilon r. Um, decay is basically the ratio of a, of a capacitance of a dielectric filled uh, capacitor to an air filled capacitor. Um, uh, we all may remember the experiments in the physics class where you had a, a plate capacitor and you measured the capacitance and then you put the dielectric inside and the capacitance changed and the ratio is a decay. And uh, the decay is affecting the impedance. Uh, the impedance goes with a um, square root or rather the inverse of a square root of decay. Um, um, the decay also affects the propagation delay. Higher decay makes the signals propagate slower. Um, it increases phase shift. Um, and also the higher decay will increase the coupling between parallel uh, conductors. So decay really has an effect on how your, the, your circuitry works. Um, now, the name dielectric constant, unfortunately, is a misleading term. Um, it's not a constant. It's a, it's a parameter that is changing over orientation of a field. There's an anisotropy. Uh, we are talking about woven glass reinforced materials. So the C-axis property is different than in-plane properties. So you really need to uh, consider what field orientation your design has, and, and then you can check the right decay property that is either in plane or out of plane. And those are different. Uh, there's a influence of a temperature on a decay value. Uh, there for sure is a frequency dependency. And also um, all these systems, all these resin systems do show a certain degree of aging um, that affects the direct properties. Uh, the key here is to keep that um, very small, so there's not a lot of change over, over H. Um, starting with anisotropy, on the right-hand side, um, I have a 